So for our next example, uh, just like with the ellipse, we know that we want our equation to be equal to one. So with that 36 there, we'll take the step of dividing each term by 36, getting us a y squared over four when you reduce, minus an x squared over nine equal to one. And with that step, we now have what we were working with before, but we'll go ahead and work, work our way through the graph again. So first of all, with the y term coming first, we can recognize this as a vertical hyperbola. With our a squared and b squared being there, we're gonna have a is two and b is three. And also should mention that without the x and the y squared quantities having any pluses or minuses there, we also know our center is again at zero, zero. So centered at zero, zero, the a that was associated with the y is two. So up two and down two, the b associated with the x, left and right three. And again, we can use that to create our central rectangle. And even while we're at it, let's go ahead and create our asymptotes, connecting the corners. Okay, so now the question of it being a vertical hyperbola, telling us that of these four things we just plotted to help draw that rectangle, a vertical hyperbola will have vertices up and down there, top and bottom. So we know they'll be opening like this, and in fact, we've got all the, the information there, we can even draw that sketch in regards to the asymptoting happening as it goes left and right. So with that information, we can label our vertices. We know the vertices are those points the graph goes through on the transverse axis at two zero, I'm sorry, zero two, and zero negative two. And now to find the foci, we again use our formula, our foci formula, and so c squared equals two squared plus three squared so four plus nine, so 13. So C equals the square root of 13, which again does not simplify. Uh, we can approximate it as 3.6, giving you an idea of where they would go if we were plotting them. So you know, 3.6, 3.6 roughly. But to get them exact, we know that the C value is added and subtracted in the y direction, again, on the transverse axis. So our foci are gonna be at zero comma root 13 and zero comma negative root 13. Plus or minus that from the center of zero up and down in the y coordinate. All right, let's take a look at a hyperbola that has been shifted. As we see now, there's some stuff going on inside of the x and the y here. Now keep in mind, this was the x, so that's the h. Here's y, so that's the k. So we can identify x term comes first, meaning this is a horizontal hyperbola. It's gonna open left and right. But let's point out the center. So the center of h, k, well this is minus two, h is two. And that's minus three, k is three. So the center at two, three. Then we have a squared and b squared. So a is four and b is three. And let's use that information to get the start to this graph. Center of two, three, so two, three. A of four being associated with x tells me to go left and right four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The b of three for the y, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then we can connect those dimensions to give us that central rectangle, connecting the corners to give us our asymptotes. From there, since we said it was a horizontal hyperbola because of the x term coming first, we know this thing opens left and right. So in line with that center, we know our vertices will be there, opening to the left and right. From there, 
we can use our focus formula, foci formula, to find that value for c. So 4 squared plus 3 squared, 16 plus 9, so 25. So that's our c squared. So that would mean c is going to be 5. So we can look, and we can actually see on this particular graph, because c is a nice value, that the foci will be left and right, and they will be plus or minus 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We put the foci right there, 5 to the left, foci right there. And so in this case, it's actually convenient, since c was a nice number, we can just say the center was at 2, 3, but now we have to add and subtract 5 from the 2, right? But we can actually do that and get nice numbers. So the foci, if we can get that on the page there, yep, foci for this graph are going to be at the points of negative 3, comma 3, and 7, comma 3. And notice, even though it did turn out nicely, the idea was this was our center, so the y value didn't change. We just added and subtracted 5 from 2 and got the negative 3 and the positive 7 for the location of those foci.